What's up guys, my name is Brandon and this past week was a pretty ordinary week for Apple in terms of software releases, but this will likely be the last ordinary week for a while and we will explain why near the end of this video. But just to recap the week, on Monday we finally got a new macOS Monterey beta after multiple weeks of being stuck on beta 5. So we did get beta 6 for both developers and for public beta testers. And then on Tuesday we got the release of iOS and iPadOS 15 beta 8 along with tvOS 15 beta 8 and watchOS 8 beta 8. And then just hours later, Apple pushed out the updates for public beta testers as well, which is now the new normal this late into the beta cycle. So we can probably expect to see developer betas and public betas the same day. So anyways, in this video, we're going to be discussing iOS and iPadOS 15 beta 8 and some additional new features and changes found along with how it's been performing in terms of battery life, bugs, and just overall performance. So let's go ahead and start off by going over some of these additional changes. And there aren't too many, like I mentioned in my what's new video, I mean, in eighth beta, you really aren't expecting too many changes at all. And there really weren't many in here, but there were a couple of new splash screens that I wanted to show you guys. So this was a new splash screen shown when you went into the app store for the very first time on beta eight. And you could see here, it says personalized ads. Personalized ads and Apple apps, such as the App Store and Apple News, help you discover apps, products, and services that are relevant to you. We protect your privacy by using device-generated identifiers and not linking advertising information to your Apple ID. So basically, if you want your ads to be more relevant to what you're actually interested in, you could turn this on, but you also get the option now to turn off personalized ads if you do not want this you know, being the case for the App Store and Apple News. So that is a new splash screen and also a new option to turn that off if you would like to. Now we also got a new splash screen for the Translate application. So you can see now it shows conversation views, choose a side-by-side -side or face-to-face -face conversation view, which isn't new, but the splash screen overall is new. We also have auto translate and system-wide translation. So none of those features there are actually new in beta eight, but for whatever reason, we just now got this new splash screen in beta eight. Now, Apple also announced the first states that are gonna be able to use the digital ID feature in iOS 15. So you can see here, these are the first states that are gonna get access to basically being able to put your driver's license into your Apple Wallet application. So you could show your driver's license to TSA at the airport via your watch or from your phone instead of having to have your physical ID. So right now, the first states it's rolling out to are Arizona, Connecticut, Georgia, Iowa, Kentucky, Maryland, Oklahoma, and Utah. So it will be coming to other states later on, but as of right now, those are going to be the first states that this you know, driver's license and state IDs and Apple Wallet, those are gonna be the first states that it's coming to. And I'll leave this article linked down in the description below. It basically will tell you about everything in terms of security and privacy and where you can use this. And the main thing to take away from this is that yes, it's very cool, but it's only going to work for TSA at the airport for now. You're not gonna be able to go to like a bar or places like that and just use your digital ID instead of your physical ID, at least not anytime soon. But I will be showing you guys this feature when I have access to it. I am in Florida, so I'm not gonna be getting first access to it, but I will show you nonetheless when it does finally get released to me here in Florida. Also new in beta eight, when we go into the maps application and go to a destination and we swipe up, you can see here that before the add photos button was right on top of the photos. It was kind of like an overlay on top of the photos right there. But now in beta eight, you can see that add photos has been moved down below the call website guides and share options right there, right above rate this place. So I like this better. I thought it looked kind of clunky when it was on top of the photos right there. So I like the fact that add photos has now been moved inside of Maps and Beta 8. And then also when you tap on Add Photos, you can see we get Introducing Ratings and Photos right here. So kind of a new splash screen in Beta 8 as well to kind of tell you what you're doing when you go to this. So when you tap on Continue, it will allow you to add the photos to that destination. We also just recently got a new AirTags firmware update. So if you have AirTags, those might be updated. You can see when you go to the AirTag right here and when you tap on where it shows like the battery right there, when you tap on that, it will show the serial number and then the firmware right there. So you can see mine is currently on 1.0.276, but that is not the newest. The newest is 1.0. 0.291. So you might have seen that firmware update taking place, or you might just be able to check by going in here into the Find My application and seeing if you're on that latest firmware version. Although really nothing has been said about what's new 
in that. I don't think anything's been changed. It's likely just bug fixes behind the scenes. But aside from those few things, there's really nothing else new in terms of features or changes in iOS 15 at beta 8 as expected. However, there are a few bugs that I've actually noticed coming up now in beta 8 that were not there in beta 6 or 7. And some of them actually have been in beta 7, but beta 8 seems to be highlighting a lot of issues, mainly with the notification center. So you can see I'm here inside of the notification center on my lock screen, and you can see there's a big gap between the notification center text and when the first notification is. And I believe this might be related to being in a focus mode that's causing this bug, but it happens pretty much every time, even after a reboot. I have multiple issues with notification center, whether it's just the big gap right there or notifications overlapping. I just seem to be having a lot of issues with notification center here in this latest release. And I'm also still having the bug where contact photos sometimes do not appear in group chats. It just kind of shows the initials of the person with a gray little box and it doesn't show their contact photo and sometimes it doesn't show their full name either it just shows the phone number so that's also a bug i'm still facing here in beta 8. however not everything is bad because the biggest relief in beta 8 is that the twitter app is no longer crashing for me or for most people so what you want to do is make sure that you go ahead and update Twitter. So this just popped up again. You can see right here. So that's interesting. But if we go into here and then of course go to Twitter, we just want to make sure that we are fully up to date and you can see there may even be another update now. So, you know, Twitter is consistently getting updates, but I have noticed that I've not had any crashes at all on beta eight with Twitter. So that is a very good thing. Just make sure your Twitter app is up to date and you should be good to go. And finally, no more Twitter crashing. Now, as far as banking applications, some people are actually reporting that their banking apps are now working here on beta eight. I think I saw this on Twitter just a little bit ago. So yeah, you can see right here, HSBC banking app now working from the new update. So looks like banking apps are starting to work as well. Mine still does not work. So that's unfortunate. I feel like I'm one of the only ones, but banking apps seem to be not crashing as much and working more consistently now in beta eight. And then as far as AirPods connectivity, I reached out to those people who had issues on beta seven, and they say that the issues have actually been resolved in beta eight. So I did not expect that. I thought I was going to wait until the RC for them to actually see a resolution to this issue, but it looks like people with AirPods connectivity issues are having those kind of resolved in beta eight. Although I would expect some people to still be having issues because it seems like no matter what the version, people always have issues with AirPods connectivity for whatever reason. Now, as far as the overall performance here on iOS 15 beta eight, it's excellent. I mean, aside from the minor bugs in the notification center, like I mentioned, because I do have those pretty consistently, aside from that, there's really not much to complain about at all. I mean, the performance is excellent here on beta eight. It's not a huge difference from beta seven, but of course the, you know, Twitter not crashing as much as a huge update. And some of the other bugs I had have been resolved as well. I do have, like I said, minor, minor bugs, like with notification center and with messages. But aside from that, everything is running perfectly fine. And as far as battery life goes, battery life is also excellent here in beta eight. And as it should, it is the best battery life I've had so far in these beta cycles. And if we pull up my battery chart right here, you can see that I'm getting pretty good battery life. So it didn't charge my phone too much today. And you can see it lasted quite a while. So pretty good battery life. And you can see down here the activity as well. My screen was on for most of that time on that downward slant right there. So some pretty good results. You can see what's using my battery life right there. So pretty nice battery life I'm having here from beta eight, really nothing to complain about on my iPhone 12 pro. It feels about just as good as it did in iOS 14 at this point. All right, so now let's go ahead and move on to the community poll. So if we go to my channel and then go over to the community tab right here, you can see I asked just recently, I was a little late to post this, but you can see I asked, how has iOS 15 beta eight been running for you so far? And leave a comment with the device you're using. So we got about 11,000 votes. Again, I was a little late with this poll, so I apologize for that. But still, thank you to all 11,000 of you who voted and all 100 160 of the comments. I did read every single one of them. So I'm going to vote for excellent because that's actually been my experience. And you can see there 30% on excellent, 14% on good and 4% on not so good. So compared to beta seven, you can see it was 27%. And then on beta six, it was 24% and beta five, 22%. So a steady increase there and the excellent, no major bugs and good battery life option in this poll. So again, 22% to 24% to 27% to now 30% on beta eight. So that is showing steady progress here 
with these betas. That's really what we like to see. So let's go ahead and check out some of these comments and see what you guys had to say. So you can see there first I asked, is Twitter still crashing for you? And you can see most people are saying no, which is the opposite of how it was a couple of polls ago and a couple of videos ago when I asked the same thing and pretty much everybody said yes. So it's good to see that it's not crashing for most people anymore. So you can see here, Archie says the iOS 15 beta 8 feels absolutely incredible. Banking app now works. Twitter isn't crashing and the performance overall is extremely smooth and stable. Had no app crashes so far and battery life is noticeably better. So that's good to hear. Christina here says everything is running smooth and the battery life has improved slightly on my 11 Pro Max. Twitter's crashed once and that was right after I updated it. Hasn't crashed since. It really doesn't feel like a beta. So again, great things coming from beta 8 as far as your guys' experience. Jonathan says works great. Only issue I've had is when I place my MagSafe charger to the back of my phone. I no longer see the battery symbol on my battery widget. So I'm gonna test that myself. I'm gonna go ahead and put my MagSafe charger on the back right here and see if I see that show up. So let's go ahead and over here to the widgets. And yeah, it's showing up for me. It's showing up how much battery it has left, or I guess it doesn't show the actual MagSafe battery, does it? So there we go, okay. So it didn't do it the first time. I had to re-plug it in. Maybe that's what he's talking about. So you may have to take it off and re-put it back on to see the battery level of the MagSafe charger. So that may have actually been what you're experiencing there. So I may see what you're saying if that's what you were talking about. Blue Panda, I'm still having major glitches with the queue in the music app where whenever I move songs around and play, try to play next, they appear in random positions or not at all. Also the play next and shuffle shortcut doesn't work, but other than that, it's perfectly fine. So yeah, I've had issues honestly with the music queue for a very long time. And I think it's gonna take a while, especially if you're connected to like a HomePod, it's still very buggy and very slow. So not surprised to see an issue with the music queue. It's good, but my battery has been draining. So he says that he's now getting six to eight hours, whereas before he used to get about seven to 10 hours of battery life on beta seven. So it seems like this guy's iPhone 11 is actually getting worse battery life here on this update. So you can see some people are kind of chiming in there as well. Pretty interesting. My results have actually been better here on beta eight in terms of battery life. It's working pretty well. I came from beta three because I removed the profile accidentally and couldn't get it back so much less buggy. So yeah, that's a pretty big update going from beta three to beta eight. You'll definitely notice a huge jump there in performance. Chase makes me log in every time, even after I enable face ID and click remember me, pretty annoying. So yeah, Chase Bank, another banking application with issues here, not surprising there. I had one bug where I accidentally went into the Zoom feature and couldn't get out of it. Everything was blown up and made my phone unusable. I had to factory reset it. So that's interesting there. I've actually seen some people have that before as well. I believe there is an easy fix for that, but I don't know it off the top of my head, but glad you got it resolved nonetheless. Having issues with my shortcuts app when using it with Siri, it displays an error message every time. And other than that, no major bugs and battery life is excellent. So not sure what's going on there with shortcuts. I do have issues sometimes with automations and it kind of gives me an error, but the automation still works. I'm not sure if that's what you're referring to, but if you want to reach out with more information, that would be nice. Not too sure what that error could be though. Overall crashing has been fixed for most apps, including Twitter. Some notifications come in silently. So that's been an issue for a while as well. Sometimes text messages will kind of just come in without making a noise or a vibration. I've had that recently on iOS 15 as well. Beta 8 has given me random screen dimming and stopped recognizing my car charger unless I restart while plugged in. So that's interesting. Not too sure what the automatic and random screen dimming. Maybe it's just because your phone is too hot. I'm not too sure. That would maybe explain it if you do not have auto brightness on. That's really the only reason I ever see the screen dimming randomly. So yeah, guys, there you have it. Thank you to everybody who left a comment on this poll. I really do appreciate it. Again, it always helps everybody in the community kind of see how the software is running for all of us and not just me. I don't think it'd be fair if I just told you guys my experience and that was it. I like to shed light on what you guys are experiencing as well. All right, so now what is next for Apple? So if we go in to our calendar here, you will see that today is September 4th and next week is going to be the week of September 6th. And I think that next week is going to be when we see the RC build of iOS 15. Now it is possible to see a beta nine, but I'm thinking that the RC is coming next. So we could see that sometime early next week, but really the RCs come on any day. I mean, I think it could be anywhere from the 6th to the 9th where we could see iOS 15 RC. And then after that, the week of the 13th is when I think we'll see iOS 15 released to the public. And if I had to guess on one specific day, it would be the 15th, iOS 15 on the 15th. 
So it could come any day though. And of course, next week should also be interesting. And I referred to this in the beginning of the video, why we're not gonna have any more ordinary weeks is because next week is when we should see the invites go out for Apple's September event, the highly anticipated September event. We should see the invites next week. And that will also kind of indicate to us when we should expect to see iOS 15 released to everybody. So next week is shaping up to be a very interesting week and I really cannot wait to see what's in store really for the whole month of September. But next week will show us kind of a what to expect and when to expect the things we're looking forward to like the iPhone 13 event. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up like always and make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future iOS 15 coverage or my iPhone 13 coverage, which is coming a lot sooner than you think. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.